G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I just wanted to go over how we, as a family of four with two young kids, go camping when we're not towing our caravan. So in the video, I'm just gonna go over what sort of tenting we use, how we cook our meals, how we store all our food, how, how we carry enough supplies, including that of water, to be off grid for say four to five days. So stay tuned and let's get straight into today's video. So as a few of you may know who watch the channel regularly, we do own and tow a 2.5 ton Jayco Pop Top Caravan with bunks. So this is a great option for those with families who are wanting to go out and explore the country in the comfort of a caravan. However, every now and then, we still do like just to go back to basics and go camping out in the bush just with our tents, some blow up mattresses and some basic supplies. So the idea of today's video is just to go over how we carry all that and how we fit everything we need to be off grid for up to say five days inside our Land Cruiser 200 series. So I'm just gonna start here with the back of the cruiser. So it's in its unpacked form here. This is sort of where we use a bit of a kitchen. Obviously the fridge is here and sort of a go-to point on the cruiser. Now I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail about the drawer system itself because I do have a dedicated video to how I set this up and all the gear that we run on the drawers. I'm just gonna go briefly into how we pack it and where all our gear goes. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice here, we've got our CFX 65 on a fridge slide here coming out of the drawers and this table that comes out of the back of it. This table here comes in incredibly handy. You're just doing those quick overnight stops or when you just need to get some supplies out of the fridge and you need somewhere to put them, you slide that table out and you put them on there. And there is a drop down leg on this table as well, so it does can carry a fair bit of weight. So like I mentioned, we are running a 65 litre Waco CFX. Now this is just the fridge model. At the moment, it's sort of got enough supplies for a couple of days in there, but you can pack it up fairly well. And so far, I found it very accurate in the way it holds its temp here. And I love the fact that it has a digital gauge and it just regulates the temperature in there. In addition to that, we also have our light above here as well, which means this whole area underneath, including that of the table here, is all uh, covered by that light at night, which is, makes it a really nice area to work. And the good thing about Langford 200 series is that tailgate down there just adds as more bench space. So moving on into the car, now in our unpacked stage, it's obviously pretty bare in here, but you can see here that we've got a jerry can here. Now behind that is another 20 litre jerry can. And they're tied together by a strap here. This sort of gives it a cube type shaped footprint, which means it's not gonna fall over and cause a whole lot of mess in the back of the car while we're traveling. So in a, a total, in those two jerry cans there, we carry about 40 litres. And we've got another jerry can here, which is a 10 litre jerry. Now the reason we have this one is just because it's easy to use and pull out of the car. So every time we need water, we don't have to pull out one of the big 20s and pour it in if we only need say, half a litre. We can just pull out this small one here from the side, which is close to the front, use that water and then we're good to go. Now in this box here, I have got my uh, water pump box. So if we need to source some fresh water, we can do that. And there's a filter and all the relevant hoses in that. And again, I do have a dedicated video, so I'll put it up in a link up here. And you can check out that video if you wanna have a look at that in more detail and learn about how to build one for yourself. Just got some mesh flooring here that we can use for the tents if the uh, ground is not, not so great. We do have a couple of rubber floor mats here as well, and they're just really good for our shower. So if we uh, just stack these on top of each other, we can have a shower. We're not going to get our feet all dirty. Up there as well, we do have a couple of camera bags. We have one up there, which is, has all our chargers and our main camera gear, and then some drone camera gear down here. On the drawers as well, right at the front of the car here, you can see that we've got a nice good display here in relation to our battery. So we see here, we're currently bringing some solar, so we get a 100% battery, and then our switches for our side lights. And they come in very handy for when we're off grip. So all our charging requirements are here as well. We've got four USBs and two 12 volt outlets. And then in the drawer here, and this drawer is mainly used for tools and equipment. So we do have a couple of bits of camping gear in here, but you can see it's got snatch straps. Um, we've got some air hoses in there and heaps of tools towards the back, just in case anything goes wrong on our trip. Now also, this is where our stove goes as well. We've just got a basic two burner stove that fits in the drawer here where it's out of the way. Now in addition to that, we also use a jet boil. So this is just a uh, very, very quick way to boil water, heat up water, whether it be for a coffee or for washing your dishes. Um, something that I always carry and I almost use every single trip, whether or not we're towing or not. Now having this fridge box here, we do have this section on the other side of the fridge here as well. So down here at the moment, we do have a first aid kit, plus just some bits and pieces that we don't often need to get to, and just some more camera gear. Now these kits are wing kits as well, so they do lift up and there's some storage underneath there. And this one here is a bit more difficult to get to. And this is where we keep some of the spares for our vehicle, such as belts and hoses, a vehicle manual and some jacks, etc. 
So moving on into our camp setup itself. So the first thing I go over is how we do go about cooking and where we keep all our food supplies. So here is, we just carry a basic table. It's a fold up table that folds in half and that fits down the center of that back section in the cruiser. In addition to that, we've just got that basic two burner stove and we only carry one fry pan, one saucepan, and then just a billy can as well. The billy can comes in real handy just to boil water. Again, whether you need it just for the shower, to wash your dishes or uh, for your coffees. And this one here is just a very basic one, but it does the job really well, folds up. And we've used it for the last six years, trouble free. In order to wash our dishes, again, we just use a nice little easy fold up uh, washing uh, container here. This just fits into our pantry box really nicely. Fill it up with water, whether hot or cold, and then we can uh, do our dishes there. And to keep all our dishwashing supplies, we just have one of these containers here. It just goes a bit of our dishwashing liquid into a little uh, hand bottle there. Some matches to light the stove, some other bits and pieces. Now in order to carry all our food, we use this box down here, which we just got from Bunnings. This is what we refer to as our pantry box. This fits in really nicely into that uh, left hand area of the Land Cruiser. And in here is where we keep all of our cutlery, bowls, plates, and all of our food supplies. So you can see here, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. We're on day three of a camping trip, but we've got everything from paper towels, oil, coffee, our bowls and plates are down the bottom in this corner here. We've got some bread, chips, utensils are in there as well, breakfast cereals. Obviously the size of this is going to depend on how long you're planning on going away for. Um, for us, we're off grid for about four days this time. And uh, this has been enough to pack everything into when you include the CFX 65 litre fridge as well. So having a box like this does come in extremely handy for when you're cooking away from the vehicle. I have seen a lot of setups where they put all their pantry and their food items into a drawer. And this means that you're gonna be stuck to the side of the cart when you are cooking. You see here as well, for our gas burner, we just have a small two kilo gas bottle. This does last a long time when using it just on this two burner stove. Just got four basic fold up chairs. We've got a couple here for the kids. Now these actually are designed for adults. They're just referred to as beach chairs, but they come in really, really handy for the kids. Because they're so low, they're a little bit more stable, but they also have this mesh netting in the, uh, the seat parts here, which means that sand and dirt seems to fall through them and uh, makes it keep them a little bit clean up while you're trying to eat your dinner dinner for us we just use a couple of arb fold-up chairs just a little bit uh, wider and a bit firmer than those general uh, normal chairs and they still fold up into a nice square shape when you pack them away taking up very little room inside the vehicle moving on to our sleeping arrangements so in this case here we use the oz 10 rvs so this tent here is referred to as a 30 second tent and quite honestly they've got to be some of the best and fastest packing and setting up tents i've ever used We've been using one of these tents now for the last six years, well and truly before we started having kids, and they are awesome. They're an aluminium frame. They literally take 30 seconds to pack up and 30 seconds to put up, and they are incredibly strong and durable. In the future, I will endeavor to do a uh, comprehensive review on these RV systems. However, just for now, we'll go over how we use them. So as you can see here, we have two of them, and these are both uh, the Oz 10 RV4s. Originally, we were planning on getting one of the tag-along tents. However, we managed to pick up a second one here, just on the second-hand market for a really good price, and hence why we carry two of them. So in these tents here, we just have a couple of mattresses. So in this one here is a double mattress, with the two sleeping bags here. With the age of our kids at the moment, one being almost four and one being just under two years old, we do sleep one adult and one child per tent, which so uh, just to make sure that they, when they do wake up during the night, we're there to help them out. So in that one there, we've got a double bed, and this one here we have two singles. And the reason for that is every now and then when we do go camping, or I do go camping by myself, I can take one of the singles with one of these tents, and it's still nice and easy to pack up and put away, and it keeps it nice and small. Now, the last thing we'll move on to is sort of what we, the bathroom area. Now, we don't carry a toilet as such, but what we do carry is a shower. So this here is a uh, pressure shower. I believe it's made by Coleman. We've had it for about six or seven years now, and it's still doing the job really, really well. So it's 10 liters um, capacity in here. You simply open up this top section in here. You fill it up with water. Uh, you fill it, say, with about eight liters of cold water. You can put about a liter of boiling water in there. And then you've got a temperature gauge on the side here. You try and get it into that green zone, obviously. And then you just pump it up using this uh, pump spray here, plugging in that hose down there, this section here, which is like an airlock fitting, and you've got pressurized warm water for your shower. Now again, we've used that for many, many years, 
It's very small, very compact, very simple and easy to use. It doesn't require 12 volt and again, no problems with it. So although this setup all looks great here during the day, as you can imagine, we need lighting as well. Now I've tried to keep this uh, setup as basic as possible for our 12 volt setup. And again, I do have a dedicated video to our 12 volt setup on the cruiser. If you want to check out what we've done to this cruiser, you can do so. <coughs> Now in terms of lighting, I've got two options for camp lighting. The first one is these small uh, light force rock lights that I've mounted to the roof racks. There's one just in there, and there's another one just in here. Now I've got them mounted on both sides of the roof rack, and that makes it really, really easy to see at night, and it does light up this whole area. I'll put a screenshot in there now just to overlay, and you'll be able to see just how much light those little ones produce. Now in addition to that, I do also carry ARB awning on top of the roof rack here and again we do have those lights underneath the awning so if the awning is out those lights will still work again there's two on this cruiser however there are two one meter LED strips inside this awning and I'll check another photo up from an old trip where I've got that set up so there's both one at the mounting section of the awning here and another one at the end of the awning where that silver aluminium expands out to and that's just a quick plug and play wiring harness that I've built in to plug into a cigarette socket and that will light up the whole section underneath the awning here. Now in all honesty, I have found awnings on four wheel drives a little bit overrated. We've been carrying this awning on the car now every trip for the last 18 months and I'm still yet to use it on a single trip. Don't get me wrong, it has its purpose. It's really good for say beach days when there is no shelter. However, it's just not something that I don't often use when the weather's nice. And you see today we've got an absolutely perfect day. The last thing I wanna be doing is sticking that awning out and covering up some of this nice sunshine and the uh, experience of that camping and open feel. Again at night, I don't wanna be sticking that awning out and closing up the night sky when I wanna be looking up there, sitting by a campfire, checking out all the stars. So there you have it guys, that is our basic cam setup. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna come back to you guys tomorrow when we pack it all up. I'm gonna show you how we fit all this in the car, where it all goes and what it looks like. Okay, so here we are the next morning. Like I said, we're gonna go through the car all packed up. So we're on uh, one of the beaches here down in Esperance. It's another perfect day in the south of WA. So let's go over how I get all that gear that we went through onto this length of the 200 series. So we'll start up there at the roof rack. Okay, so we're coming on the passenger side of the car and you can see there that solar panel at the front which is partially covered by the tents. So the good thing about having this nice thin solar panel is that the tents and any other gear can be packed on top of it. Yes, it uh, takes away from the efficiency of the panel, but while we're traveling, obviously the car's on it anyway, uh, powering up that battery. So you've got those two Oz10 RV4s stacked on top of each other, so the second one's underneath it, and the other one's on top, and they are almost the length of the roof rack all the way to the back of the car there. Also on this passenger side, you can see here the Max Tracks. So they're just mounted down using an aluminium bracket with these uh, pins on it, which lock them in place. And the back corner here, we do actually have a padlock on them just for security. Okay, so on the driver's side of the car here, we have that solar panel at the front, which you can see there. Behind that, we have this large space case here. So this is held down by three of these latches here. And in here is where we keep all of our sleeping gear. So you can see in here, we've got all of our sleeping bags and all of our air mattresses. And the good thing about having them up here is it's nice and waterproof, but also all this gear is nice and light, so it keeps that roof rack weight down and uh, keeps all these bags from rolling around inside the car. Now just on this trip as well, we do have a jerry can because we are free capping for about five days and there wasn't too much uh, options there for refueling, so we've got 20 litres of fuel there on the back just behind, uh, tied down to those mounts there. So with all the gear that we carry, this is where most of it is stored in the back here. And as you can see, it is quite full. So we've obviously got the fridge here. We keep one of the cameras just tied in down the front here and a couple of toilet rolls. There is still some ventilation there for the fridge. It's not completely blocked up, but the fans on the Wacos do blow right to left. So it's uh, ventilation on the left there is nice and open. Now obviously the good thing about having this fridge box here is that even though this, this car is completely packed up all around, you can still pull this fridge out and none of that gear falls in behind it. So we still have full access to the fridge, even with that car fully packed up like it is at the moment. So on the right hand side here on this wing kit, we just have our billy cam, we have our toiletry bags. So just the last thing we pack away in the car is our toiletry bags, so we can do our teeth, wash our hands, and get freshened up before we go in for a drive. On the top of the fridge box here, we have our two chairs, our two camped uh, fold-out chairs. They're the ones that uh, my wife and I use, just the bigger ones, they fit on top. And we just have a strap here that ties them down to this handle so they don't move forward into the back seat while we're driving. 
With this trip here, we are also camping in some colder weather, so again, we have our jackets, and they're just stacked it down the side in between this gap here, just so we can get and get to them nice and easily. Now, behind those jackets there, we do have our table, and that folds up and slides in just between the fridge box and those jerry cans. So you see those jerry cans in the back there, and we saw them when the car was unpacked. They just sit at the back, and we've got those rubber mats there. So that fits nice and tight, and nothing around here really moves while we're out four wheel driving. You see this big pantry box? This is obviously where it sits here in the front of the car. The good thing about having it not here is that we can just remove these couple of bags that are on top and we can still access our food nice and easily. If we do remove these couple of bags here, you see that we've got another couple of chairs just stacked up. They're the kids' chairs there, these two grey bags. They just stack up against that passenger side window. That large bag on, up there on top of the jerry cans is another camera bag. It just keeps more of our spares, our batteries and our charging gear. And then down the side here, move those nappies out of the way. You can see there that we have that 10 litre jerry can. So the good thing about this is we can just push this pantry box over and the jerry can will just slide out here, giving us nice and easy access to small amounts of water when we need it. Just got some bits and pieces in here and the good thing is we can still have our charging station running down here, which is charging our watch at the moment. So also in the back here, obviously we do have that drawer. When you pull that open, we can see all of our tools there. Plus we got that uh, two burner stove packed on top there. We've got a hot plate underneath. And uh, I forgot to mention as well, we do also carry a uh, compact foldable fire pit, which is slid down the side here, along with a picnic rug and a few other bits and pieces. You can see there, we're quite fully packed. We've got everything we need and it all has a space to fit. Another great thing about the Lancaster 200 series, it has these compartments inside the tailgate here. So if we open that up, you can see a lot of our air inflation gear, some uh, bug spray, gloves, fly nets, just bits and pieces, and that fits nicely inside the tailgate and locks away. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's how we fit all of our gear for a family of four into our car when we're not towing a trailer or a caravan. As you can see, we have a fair bit of gear, but we have everything we need and it all has a place inside of our car, albeit it is very tight. It's still very easy to access and very convenient. So I hope to give you a little bit of insight as to what we carry. I might have given you a few ideas for your setup as well. And look, if you have any questions or want to know any more detail about what we carry and how we pack it all up, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram at Exploring Oz and we'll be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.